this video is um, probably something that a lot of you guys have a billion questions about. Um, the Aikido world in itself has no idea how to take Kemi off of our style of eating minage. Okay, it's, I've seen hundreds and hundreds of people trying to pull off the type of breakfall that we do from, uh, from Minage. So basically we're doing a video for you guys breaking down actually how to learn, how we teach, how I taught my students how to take the Riminage breakfall. In the beginning, this, this is one of those breakfalls where you know, you're gonna take a couple bad falls. It's, it's almost like you're gonna feel like you're getting pushed off you know, a cliff of, of the Grand Canyon because it's, it's a scary, it's a very scary throw. It's a very scary technique with the Bikemi if, if you're not confident with it, especially if you take two, three bad falls or you actually take that full blast of a Riminage in your throat, the next day you're gonna feel like you have strep throat. You're gonna, you're gonna feel horrible. So this is one of those techniques where your timing has to be right on with that throw. Otherwise, you're gonna take that full blunt of that power from eating Minage coming in right across the neck. Now, obviously in real world applying this on the street, who cares what you do to that person? You know, if that person's dumb enough to attack you and you pull off an Arimi Nagi at them, oh well, whatever they feel, that's their problem. It's not yours. They should have been smart enough not to attack you in the first place. So, that being said, we're going to get to the basics of how to do Arimi Nagi and we're going to show you how we break it down. Okay? So, I have both of my seniors today doing this video. I have Chris and Frank. Hi, Hey. Hi. We use the Joe. Okay? We use this as a tool. So instead of sticking your arm out and basically running into the arm and close on yourself, we use this to teach you how to drop, how to basically disengage your spine and allow yourself to just fall right down on the ground. This is something that's, it's a difficult process to learn, but once you get it, it's a piece of cake. Okay, so we're going to show you how we start off doing this, then we're going to show you how it progresses, then we're going to show you without the Joe how to learn how to do this, which is holding your arm out and allowing somebody to actually throw themselves. Now you got to keep in mind, this we refer to as a buddy line. It's the same thing as if I was throwing you with the Riminage. This is your buddy line. When you get really good at taking Kemi from a Riminage, Saiyanage, whatever, you barely use this as a buddy line. At that point, you can take this back fall, just like how you can take a forward, so tell me a forward break ball with no one helping you, how you can just throw you into this, this would almost get to the point where you could do that over a course of a period of time where you don't even need to make connection with somebody to actually have that to be able to take the fall. You just automatically do it like how you would a solo break fall. So Chris is going to demonstrate this. So basically Frank is going to hold one end of the joke, I'm going to hold the other end of the joke. So go on a slide a little bit. So from here, we raise this up to pretty much neck level. So as Chris walks through, okay, He's coming right into this to match this being the arm for Riminage. He's going to continuously go through to the point where he's leaning back. And then at that point, his feet are together and he's going to disengage and sit straight down. As he sits straight down, straight down, he rolls back. Both feet come up off the ground. He can slap the mat if he needed to. Okay. When you actually do the fall, you're actually taking, taking that force out by slapping the hand. My back up. Okay. He walks, he walks through again, pushes forward, disengages, straight down, <coughs> brings his feet, rolls his feet up, and usually brings his feet down into his chest, and then he pushes them back out as he finalizes the actual fall. Okay, one more time. Goes through, down. See how everything compresses in, he absorbs that whole entire fall. Okay, you go a little faster. right there. One more time. Okay. Now, Chris is going to do this slow and I'm going to point something out to you. Okay. Got to do it again. Nice and slow. See how he goes all the way back. He drops down. He goes as far as he possibly can before he disengages his spine and he releases to where he can sit down and take two Kemi. Okay. Now, what does that look like to you guys? outside of the martial art world? Can anyone answer that question? Think about it for one second, two seconds, three seconds. What does that look like? I'm sure every one of you that is watching this video at one point or another 
were drunk as fuck at a bar or at somebody's house party and somebody said, hey, let's do the limbo. Let's see how far we can get with the limbo. When you're drunk, you do stupid shit. This is our way and how we teach somebody how to do this. You're basically doing the limbo. Okay, so as Chris comes through, look, he's doing the limbo. He goes all the way back, but instead of trying to go through, staying on his feet, he drops his body and takes the ukemi. This is the basic format of getting that. He doesn't turn his head off to the side. He tilts his head back because that is what's going to happen when you actually get thrown. You're not going to be able to turn your head to the side. One last time on this. Goes through, straight down. He absorbs comes back up, okay? Once you have this good idea how this works, then what Frank and I start doing at this point, as Chris comes in, we move the jaw towards him, which makes him move faster because in an application of technique, that Iriminagi hand is coming quick, so he has to respond faster. So now this is about responding. Originally, you're learning how to go through, do the limbo, Falling down on the ground, absorbing the ground, taking proper ukemi. Now we're simulating this as the arm. The arm is coming towards him, which is going to make him react faster to the throw. Okay? All right, go ahead. Goes through, goes down. Okay? We need to be together at the same time. Ready? See, Chris is taking the ukemi without touching anything. That shows you how good his ukemi is. He can take that ukemi without even touching. That's why I use him a lot in those videos for taking Hidiminage, Great Falls, Sayunage, because his ukemi is at such an excelled level that he can do this without having to hold on to anything. Okay? Obviously, he's not going to hold on to this like it's a buddy arm, because we're lightly holding on to the jaw. When you do it with technique, then he's going to hold on to the arm a little bit more. So we're going to do this one or two more times? No, don't. So be quick. That's it. It's basically how it's done with the Joe. Now we're going to show you how to do this without the Joe. Okay? So from here, I'm just going to have my hand out. And as he comes in, takes the Tsukemi slow. He's going to cup his arm around my arm, around my arm is a buddy line, and he's just going to go straight down to the ground, okay? He's going to drop and go straight down, and I'm basically going to have that there. He's basically going to hold on to my arm, and he's going to release his arm, but still hold on. So he's going to unravel his arm where he can allow himself to go down to the ground, but he's still holding on to my arm, okay? But I don't want to take the fall, just, just go down like the basic. And we're going to add the next thing to this. Okay? One more time like that, please. So you stick your arm out, he comes in, grabs, straight down, straight down to the ground, he goes. Now, you being the nage, now you're going to help him by pushing his hips or his koshida, just like you would if you were doing actual technique. So now we're going to add this next step to help him come through. Okay? Basically from that point, it's now it's going to be the actual fall because he's not going to be able to drop because my hand's going to be underneath him. But now I'm not stepping in. I'm just helping him through. The next version of this will be moving just like what we did with the Joe. And then he's going to be taking the Ukemi that way. Okay? Ready? Now, we're going to follow through. Just like how the Joe was coming towards him, now it's going to be the same thing. One more. Perfect. So that is the Ukemi on how to do our version of the Riminage Break Fall. We've titled it Koho Sutemi because it's basically you're taking a back break fall instead of a front instead of a front break fall, which is 
typically called just sutemi, which is like a sacrificial fall. You're basically sacrificing yourself for the sake of technique, but you're also protecting yourself in the same respect. So this is Koho Sutemi. This is the Riminage break fall that you see in a lot of our videos. And this also um, works with the Sayunage throw as well. That's a little bit different. We're not showing you Kemi on that because it's pretty much the same thing. Okay, the same exact fall, same type of application. So this is Koho Sutemi. Back break fall for uh, the Iminage technique. That's it for this video.